Hey guys, and welcome back for another video. So today we have a special treat for you. And when I say special treat for you, I mean special treat for me. <laughs> First of all, Hubsters is in the video. That always makes it nice. And then Buffalo Trace. Who the heck even knows what this is, but it's supposed to be a bourbon mixed with a whiskey. And uh, we're trying some. Don't worry, all the kids are asleep. And we're also going to be playing a game where we select three random questions that we're gonna ask each other. You know what would be super fun? If you answer the questions in the comments section right along with us and tell us your answers. You're eating, so it probably would be better for you to ask the question. So you choose a card and ask me. Okay, when someone hurts you or lets you down, how do you handle it? What do you think forgiveness means? Um, well, okay, to start off, how do I handle if somebody hurts me? Um, most of the time, I definitely lash out. I'm definitely the kind of person that, you know, <laughs> gets you kind of, gets you kind of told, but not in like a ghetto trashy kind of way. I will just, you know, let you know that you've upset me and, you know, you can either rectify the situation or lose me as a friend. That's pretty much it. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to keep people around who hurt me. Like that just doesn't, it just doesn't work like that. Like... <laughs> Can do better by myself so and then what was the second part of the question what do you think forgiveness is Ooh. oh my god this is so strong um what do i think forgiveness is forgiveness is when you do not harbor any ill feelings for past transgressions like if somebody does hurt you if you forgive them it means that you no longer have anger or disdain towards them you've completely let it go and you can treat them like a normal everyday person out on the street. You don't have any, you know, anger or anything for them anymore. Doesn't mean that you allow them in your life the same way. You know what I'm saying? It just means that, hey, I ain't tripping over it no more. We cool. My turn. What was the time in your life when you had to be brave? And the second part is, in what ways do you see courage in me? Try it. It's crazy strong. By the way, y'all, this has like 45% alcohol. So if you're not a tough drinker, not for you. <laughs> Probably need the chaser. <laughs> when I was in middle school, a buddy of mine looked like he was about to be surrounded by a bunch of uh, dudes. Now, I'm from Detroit, but let's be honest. Nobody wants to hop in a fight and get their butt beat by like a group of people. But I saw him in there, so I kind of jumped in there, you know, was like, hey, we're going to do this together. And somehow, talked enough smack where it was able to get us out of this situation, at least, or bought us enough time to, a teacher came, and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why did you let me by all these people? Oh, well, that was so, kind of you. Yeah, I mean, how do I put this? If you don't want to, you can take a beating, but let's be honest. Even if you're willing to take a beating, do you always want that beating? A rational person don't want to just run up and get you know if it's a numbers game, you get you can't hand it to you. Mm -hmm. What ways do you see courage in me? That's the second part of the question. I like the adventurous nature because being adventurous is like curious, curious but at the same time, it's showing like bravery, like, hey, I'm gonna let my wonder carry me past what most rational people will be like, hey, I might not be getting, I might not get the, not a rational person, but I guess, uh, yeah, that sounded bad. right. I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> not a rational person, but I'll say a person who's not that brave. Somebody who's, who lets their fears kind of stop them. It's like seeing somebody, seeing you go towards things like that. I just think oh, yeah, she's pretty brave. Maybe I'm not so much that. I don't know. Well, maybe I'm brave in ways that you aren't, and you're brave in ways that I'm not. Next question. To let you know, don't let her fool you. She had me drink a little bit before this video. I didn't have him do it. He did that on his own. <laughs> when was the first time you earned money as a young person who had the most influence in shaping your work ethic? Um, well... The first time I remember earning money as a young person, I remember being like mm, somewhere between maybe nine, 11 years old. My dad had a cleaning business where he contracted to these offices, you know, businesses that uh, had offices, I should say, cubicles and such that needed to be cleaned on the weekends. And that was like his 
side hustle, I guess you could say. And he would bring me and my brother with him and we would help. And some people may look at that as like child labor, but he actually gave us money. We earned money as he was earning money, you know, and we helped him. And it taught me a lot, like working with him and seeing how thorough he was. That's why, like, you may even notice this about me. Like, I'm very thorough in the way that I clean because I got taught by somebody who did it for a living, basically. <laughs> You know, so my turn. Let me shuffle these up because there's only a few cards left and I don't want to pick. I just want it to be random and streak. And this one. Do you think your parents were too lenient or too strict? And which rules were the most difficult for you to submit to? My old man, um, I thought he was strict. Too strict? Yeah, I did. I thought he was too strict. Growing up, now that I've come to this age I realized that you know it's okay to be strict well everybody got their own parents style because I don't even want to call it strict you want to be stern but not strict so basically the rules are these stick by the rules yeah. some people might still think okay those rules are strict but so you're you know. just basically saying that your dad was too strict point blank period yeah. now it says which rules of his were the most difficult for you to submit to I don't want to be a hypocrite but the stuff I plan to teach my kids you plan are to live things out. I live myself. For so sure. I don't want to be a do as I say, not as I do. So you feel like he had rules that he wanted you to follow, but he didn't follow? Yeah. Okay. So that was what was the most difficult for you. Not like a particular yeah, rule, parents. but just feeling like they didn't practice what they preach, basically. Exactly. Okay. Oh, this is so cringy. I don't even want to read it. Do it. You have to. It doesn't matter. What are three things I do that make you feel special and loved? Three things that you do mm -hmm. well first of all you are an excellent cook and whenever you cook for me you definitely try to cook different stuff you look up recipes so that we can have something exotic or different and I feel like that takes effort and I feel like a lot of times you kind of like learn new recipes with me because you were trying to make something nice for me you know and I, so I really appreciate that fine cuisine is the way to a girl's heart too okay <laughs> and secondly i appreciate the fact that you're a, a great provider you take good care of our household we want for nothing and i really that's the first one but i mean it's just what i'm thinking of next you know as far as like what i appreciate about you and i mean the fact that you gave me some beautiful kids and they're smart and healthy and you know, I just really appreciate that. I mean, all my kids are smart and healthy. It's just that you gave me, you know, my boys. So I appreciate that. All right. And there's only two left. Switch, 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 switch. Let's see. Oh, and so we're this. <laughs> this is a little bit cringy, but the cringy, the better. <laughs> Name one thing you like about my appearance. One thing you enjoy in my personality. And one talent you admire. Oh, and a character trait that you respect. So. I'm gonna have to take it slow because the alcohol that I consumed <laughs> is taking effect. I like your hair. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I like the way it shines and how long it is. Even though you claim me, you know, you don't like that it's, as you put it, frizzes up. Yeah, it's pretty frizzy. I like that too. Oh, you like my frizzy hair? <laughs> mm hmm. You're so sweet. Okay, um, what is one talent or no it says what do you enjoy about my personality quiet. i'm quiet people who know me in real life like in fact somebody really close to me actually told me they were like i'm really surprised that you have a youtube channel because your personality just would not say that you would be that open like with the public like that <laughs> she, she is the girl that you will see in those movie tropes where they're sitting in the library they got the square glasses on and all they do each day you sit down there just look at you and then goes back yeah sounds about right <laughs> yeah. it gets to the point that like she just looks at me every day maybe she just be respectful do she has feelings for me what is going on in her mind <laughs> that's that's how she would act and it's like this chick is weird, this chick is weird but you like it <laughs> That makes me even worse. What is one talent? Do I even have any talents? Like I admit, like I feel like I can't sing. I Her can't really dance. Personality. My dual personality. What? You say I'm bipolar? What y'all see and what I get. <laughs> oh, really? I don't know. I guess I am pretty quiet. I'm like one of those people. 
if I'm in a social setting, I like to observe. I'm one of those, I guess you can say wallflowers where I just kind of lean up and just look around, you know, because it's not that I don't like the people or I'm not enjoying the space I'm in. It's just that I just like to see what other people are doing and talking about. I like to feel the room, so to speak. And then it says, so, and then one character trait that you respect, what's, what do they mean by, because to me, that's almost like part of your personality. Like you just name one thing you enjoyed about my personality. So then like now it says one oh, character trait. Her optimism. Oh yeah, that is a character. Trait. She is unnaturally optimistic. There's one last question. And so I guess this is for me to ask you. No. What are your family's attitudes toward people of other races oh. and cultures? Has that had an impact on you? I was hoping you would get this question. <laughs> All right, straight up, you guys. Let's talk about it. How it was like growing up in my mixed household with my white mom and my black dad. And you know what? I'll say it. My dad, you know, he was born and raised in the D, Detroit. So it's like he was very much into blackness. I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, when he was really young, he showed me pictures of himself with like the Afro. So I think he was all into his blackness and everything. But he was also one of those black people that had parents that were from like the 1920s and 1930s. So it was like, they were real old school in the way that they taught him and up, brought him up. So he didn't appreciate like a lot of the culture that we have. So he would talk about a lot of the black culture as it is today in a negative way. You know, he definitely differentiated between the niggas and the black people. So to me, I was always brought up that there's two kinds of black people, the kind you want to be and not the other kind, the kind that are ghetto. And then, you know, I'm not going to lie. My mom was white. So and because she was forced to grow up around that. And, you know, there were times where she told me like she would be mistreated, you know, and she just felt like people didn't like her because she was white. And she literally had people tell her that she was white and they didn't like her. Like she never felt really accepted by certain people in his family. She told me about an instance where, you know, they pretty much told her like she was a white B word and, you know, that my dad was just kind of using her or something like that, you know, just trying to make her feel bad for being with him. And so I think we kind of grew up in this idea where it was like we weren't like better than anybody, but just like we had to stay away from any kind of black people that had those negative traits. And my dad was all about that. My mom was all about that, you know, so. I think that's why my videos are like how they are because I'm always like, oh, that's ghetto. That's this, that's that, because that's how I was brought up. Like we were brought up, like look at those and look at how they're acting and congregating and looking looking like this and dressing like that and speaking this way, you know what I mean? And maybe that, you know, isn't all right to judge people, but I can just say that it's like one of those things where I just know that I'm not gonna be a part of that. And I don't want my children to be a part of that. So I don't display certain behaviors that I don't like. But yeah, I grew up in a household where that kind of crap was pointed out. And then when talked about white people, a lot of times my dad would do it in a way where it was kind of like halfway there, like some white people he respected, but I don't think he really cared for white men very much. Um, and that's just from what I could decipher in the conversations, you know? And um, what other part was that? Like, how has that impacted my life? Obviously, it's caused me to have some severe identity issues and <laughs> to the point where I have a whole YouTube channel about it. So, yeah. And that's probably going to be the end of this video because the smallest one is up now crying. Babe has had too much to drink and um, I got to take care of him. So, we will see you guys next time. Don't forget to leave us a comment and tell us what you thought about all this. And don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.